Hi, I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Michaela. This is the oscillating steam engine. To start, we're going to walk you through the creation of two pretty interesting parts, and then we're going to talk about the overall assembly at the end. So the first part we're going to make is the crankshaft bearing. So you'll want to start a new part design, and then from there we'll enter Sketcher, and we're going to choose the ZX plane. And we're going to start by just making an overall profile of the piece, and then we'll add the dimensions to it. So what advantage does having, does creating the overall profile give you over just going line by line? For me, it's helpful because then I can keep everything in order um, while I'm making it versus uh, going by line by line and worrying about skipping stuff or just putting them in the wrong spot. So as we add the dimensions here, um, we will add them for all of the pieces and then we'll exit the workbench and since this is a circular part, it'll end up being revolved around this axis here. Once we finish adding these pieces, that edge should fix itself when the overall length is added. Alright, and then since we're going to be revolving this piece, we're going to constrain this bottom edge to line up with the axis here, so that way it will be easier to rotate. So we'll go ahead and exit, and then from there we'll click shaft, and we're going to choose the axis as this bottom edge, and then select the overall profile, and that'll give us a nice view of the piece before it has been extruded. And now we'll go about adding the rest of the holes that are on the piece. So we'll select this front face, and then choose hole, and we'll change the diameter, and the hole type to be up to last, so it will go all the way through. We'll check the positioning sketch just to make sure it's lined up in the center, and it is, so we'll go ahead and hit OK. And now there is the first hole that goes all the way through the piece, so we'll start on adding the extra holes for the smaller edge. So we'll change that, head back to the positioning sketch, and this hole is lined up with the center axis. And it is 10 millimeters away from the center. And then we'll just go ahead and make sure this offset is zero, so it is perfectly lined up with the axis. Since there's three of these, we can go ahead and leave that hole selected and choose the circular pattern. And we'll change the number of instances to three and the spacing to 120 degrees since we want it to be evenly spaced. And then we'll choose our face that they'll all be on and go ahead and hit OK. And the last step for this piece is to add the um, chamfer to the edges. So we'll go ahead and select that. And then we'll choose our edge, which will be this back edge here. And the length for this is one millimeter, so we'll go ahead and hit OK. And that is the end of this piece. That seemed like a really quick way to make a semi-complicated part. It is a bit faster than having to go through and add every single uh, circle and pad it out for each three sections and then go back and mess with the other pieces. All right, so now we'll switch it off and I'll create a part. So the part I'm going to make is the steam pipe, which is effectively a curved pipe. To start, you're going to create a new part design. And the tricky part with the steam pipe is the fact that it is curved, and it's hard to really show a curve. So what we're going to do is go into the ZX plane here on a sketch and create basically the profile that we want our circle to follow. 
So to start, we are actually going to make a circle, but this isn't the steam pipe itself. This circle has a diameter of 20 millimeters. So at the end, we're going to use the rib tool, which will allow our steam pipe to effectively follow a curve that we, we create. So we need to effectively section off the part of the curve that we really want here, and then use this little quick trim eraser tool, and voila, we now have the quarter circle that we want to follow. On top of this, we have little extensions that come out five millimeters on either side. We have to make sure these are lined up nice and straight. Otherwise, the circle that we create for the steam pipe will follow whatever we create. So if it's off by a little bit, it's going to follow something that's off by a little bit. Now, in order to effectively use the rib tool, you do have to basically constrain this to the origin a little bit. So that way, when you create the circle and it goes to follow this profile, it won't go all over the place. Now for creating the circle, we need to effectively make it so the circle will be able to follow the path. And as a result, we have to select the YZ plane. And we do want to have our circle lined up pretty close to here because we will be constraining it to the curve in a second. So the outer diameter of this circle is four millimeters with the inner diameter being three. We want to constrain that one to the center of our big circle and this will create basically the hole in the middle that follows the whole way through. It's much easier to do it this way rather than trying to create a bunch of holes that follow a curve. So we exit the workbench, we have everything lined up now. It looks like the start of a pipe, but we'll come over here to the rib tool. We will select our circle as the profile and our center curve is this curve here. We click OK and voila, we have an actual steam pipe that looks like a curved pipe. So finally, we're going to talk about the overall assembly. So for the overall assembly, we had 17 parts plus um, some hardware that had to be added in. So um, the first piece that we made, you can see it... Um, was the uh, frame support that would mount uh, the steam engine to a table or whatever surface it's on. Um, and then it connects our base, which connects to um, both the crankshaft and the, um, the shaft at the top where the piston would move to rotate the crankshaft. And one tricky thing with this assembly is the fact that we did still want everything to rotate but stay in place at the end. So we had to be really careful with our constraints. And as you can see, if we use our manipulator with respect to constraints, we can actually come in here and still move some parts around. And the whole assembly will follow it exactly as it would in real life. So we hope you enjoyed our presentation on the oscillating steam engine. And on how to create a couple of the parts that go along with it. Um, thank you for listening.